Gentlemen, this is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Tuesday, the 7th day of January, year of our Lord, 2020. Welcome to the John Moore Show. We begin our shows with something I would like to see done at the Gun Rights Rally, which is going to be uh, in 13 days in uh, Richmond, Virginia, Monday the 20th. They have an annual gun rights rally. This has the potential of being the largest gun rights rally ever held anywhere in the country. Uh, that would be a wonderful thing. I would love to see tens of thousands of Americans say the Pledge of Allegiance in front of the state capitol at Richmond, Virginia on Monday, the 20th of January. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to have uh, open lines this morning, uh, the first hour. Leon Green will be with the second hour. The proper tip of the day is to encourage you to support President Trump. Now, how can you do that? That's a good question. How can you do that? Well, there's obviously the things that people do. They, they put a yard sign in their yard. They maybe put a bumper sticker on their bumper of their automobile. But what's more important than that, and those things are good and they're important, wearing a mega hat, what's, what's uh, Im very important is to talk to your friends, relatives, co-workers, neighbors, people you go to church with that already support President Trump. They already believe in what he's doing and they're glad what he's doing. Talk to them and make sure that they're registered to vote. You might be shocked to find out that many people who will verbally support the president are not even registered to vote. That's actually quite common, especially among younger people, people under 40 years old. So that's a great way to support the president, is to encourage people to get registered to vote, offer them transportation to the county courthouse to get registered to vote, uh, offer them transportation on election day, first Tuesday of November this year, that will be here before we know it. It's uh, less than less than 10 months away at this point. So that's your proper tip of the day, is to support President Trump. I just found out Saturday I will be speaking in Indianapolis on Friday and Saturday, the 1st and 2nd of May at the Crown Plaza Hotel. It will be a great event. Uh, Pastor Paul Begley is putting this on. Let's see. I'll click on this link here on my website, and we'll tell you who else is going to be speaking there. I know Pastor Begley is speaking, and, and his wife, Heidi, is speaking also. We have Clyde Lewis. His show is called Ground Zero. Gil Broussard. I met Gil and spent a couple of days with him at an event uh, not too long ago. And uh, Pastor Pat Bishop Larry and Sandy Ragland of the Solid Rock Church will be speaking there also. It'll be a great event. I hope a lot of you can make it. Now, only four weeks away from now, I'll be speaking in Orlando. That will be the 8th day of February, exactly a month away. Uh, today is the 7th of January, and Saturday the 8th of February, I'll be speaking in Orlando with Steve Ben Noon and his lovely wife, Jenna, and uh, you can buy tickets for that event at my website also, uh, right there at thelibertyman.com. My uh, shows with uh, Doug Hagman are now expanded as of yesterday to two hours every Monday. Doug and I have known each other for, I don't know how many years, eight years, ten years, something like that. I've followed Doug's work for quite a while, unknown to me. Doug has been a big fan of my work as well. Uh, we hit it off pretty well. We're both uh, professional investigators, uh, private detectives. We both investigated murder cases. Uh, so uh, it's it's a good uh, com camaraderie between the two of us with our common backgrounds. A lot of fun. I look forward to that Monday. I put on a coat and tie to um, be on TV with him. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And... Uh, you can uh, watch all that stuff at, at, from uh, Doug's web, Doug Hagman's website. 
the Hagman report. So that's good. That's very good. Uh, apparently, uh, the Speaker of the House is working to uh, uh, set up the president for one more thing to for him to overcome, uh, making allegations that the President of the United States is a war criminal for killing this terrorist, uh, this Iranian general, a few days back. Very disappointing, but not not a shock, not a surprise. They just, they just keep coming up with new and new narratives none of which have any basis in reality, but that doesn't matter, does it? Uh, Judicial Watch has found evidence uh, linking uh, the White House to what's, what's been going on the last three years with uh, this uh, fabricated dos- dossier being used against the president. I knew those links would eventually show up, and they're starting to. Uh, of course, this goes back to the Oval Office. There's no doubt about that. Never has been, in my mind, any doubt whatsoever that all this goes back to the White House. Of course it does. So it's going to be another interesting development in the ongoing saga of the uh, Russian collusion fantasy that was uh, dreamed up by uh, Hillary Clinton's buddies. Uh, There's uh, a lot of attention being paid to uh, geophysical matters, volcanoes, for example. I think we've got about 40 active volcanoes right now that we're aware of. Many volcanoes are under the ocean, and we simply don't know what's going on all the time under the ocean. It's a big ocean. and um, But the 40 volcanoes we know about are very concerning. A lot of speculation about why they're all becoming active now, what's causing that. Uh, there's no definitive reason. Uh, people can point to this and point to that, but it's simply educated guesswork is all that is. It doesn't change the bottom line. The bottom line is a lot more volcanism and putting the planet at risk. At risk how? Well, yeah, a one, one volcano, one really big volcano, like Krakatoa, for example, or Yellowstone, could uh, put enough particulate in the atmosphere to cause us to have uh, one or two years with no summer, not the traditional warm, sunny summer that we're used to anyway, because the particulate would block sunlight, reducing the temperature uh, all over the planet. Uh, It may just be one hemisphere, if we're fortunate. Uh, The the good-sized volcano may limit its particulate to the southern hemisphere, uh, that would be good for most people most of the time because most of the people on the planet live in the northern hemisphere and most agricultural activities in the northern hemisphere. But there's no way to tell, quite frankly. Word to the wise, uh, be prepared. Seriously, be prepared. As I've said a number of times on this show, there's no place on this planet that's completely safe from all Uh, things that can happen in Mother Nature. Earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, ice storms, tornadoes. It's it's just a long, long list. There's no place on this planet completely safe. Obviously, some places are safer than others. If you're in the Midwest, the likelihood of a hurricane uh, causing problems is dramatically reduced, although we did have a hurricane here right in my neighborhood been about eight years ago, eight or nine years ago, even the local FM uh, NPR affiliate was calling it a hurricane because it was a hurricane, or as my my friend Professor McKinney would say, a hemicane. So, um, yes, um, be prepared. Be prepared. Find a, what do you consider a safe spot for you and your family and get prepared and stay prepared. That would just be a smart thing to do, don't you think? I think it would be. Still a lot of speculation about a new civil war. Uh, I think the the people prognosticating are at a loss of words. that We don't have any real good words to describe the civil disorder that is possible over the next year. 
in this country, when people think Civil War, they obviously think of what happened back in the 1860s. Uh, the, the relevance of that to today is almost non-existent. It won't be. Uh, of course, what happened in the 1860s was not a Civil War either. A Civil War takes place inside the confines of one country. Well, that's not what we had. We already had two countries. The Confederate States of America was already a separate country with its own constitution, its own postal service, its own army, defined borders, foreign delegations taking a meeting with foreign countries and so forth, its own currency. So it was not a civil war in the face of it. That aside, that aside, uh, our, our language is a bit deficient to have a term for what we might be facing in a year, possibly sooner. So it's being called civil war. Um, I'm not sure what to call it myself, quite frankly. A massive civil disorder, massive civil disruption. Um, people in urban, suburban areas versus the rest of us that live in most of the country. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I do know it's a real, a clear and present danger. I do know that. I do know it won't be spontaneous. The news media will make it sound like and look like it's some kind of spontaneous outpouring of people that are upset over the president being elected. Of course, it won't be. It'll all be contrived and planned in advance. My guest yesterday, Sam Andrews, my, my regular Monday guest, Firearms Monday, he expressed his concern over the physical safety of the governor and the attorney general of the state of Virginia. I share his concern. These men have put themselves in a very precarious situation. They have with their public pronouncements and the legislation that they support. Very precarious. I wish no harm on these men on one hand. On the other, uh, I have very serious concerns about their physical safety. And I hope they take appropriate precautions to stay safe, which might be uh, a more difficult thing these days, shall we say. I don't know if these men are receiving threats. I, I suspect it's highly likely that they are receiving threats, given what they're doing publicly. We only have 13 days until the rally in uh, Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the state of Virginia. What's going to happen? Well, I can prognosticate along with the best of them. Of course I can. We know there's going to be thousands, possibly tens of thousands, of Virginia citizens show up to support gun rights. Will there be Antifa people there? I'd say there's a high likelihood of it. Of course there is. George Soros is probably looking at his lips, anticipating the violence and the chaos and possibly loss of life that he can create by having his people there. The Soros trained Antifa people, the Soros paid for, equipped and trained protesters, Antifa protesters. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Soros paid uh, men to shoot at both sides get a war going. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't put it past it at all. These Soros and, and the people that, that he uh, works with, they have no scruples, they have no ethics, and human life means very little to them. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if they did that. Not at all. Do a segue here. Let's see where we're at on time. We've got a couple minutes before the first break. Uh, we have some new images posted at my website. Uh, scroll down to where are we going to here? Um, yes, we have bought it. It just looks like all new coastlines in the media, really far down in the middle. New coastlines in the media. Um, we start out with the older stuff first, the, the first one being the very first image that we found. It's been, I think, four years ago this month, maybe five years ago. Uh, a scene from the incredibly popular film, The Godfather, the first of the trilogy. But let's scroll down to the most recent images. Uh, McHale's Navy, the movie, not the TV show. 
McHale's Navy, 1997, and a film called Tron Legacy. I think that may have, uh, anyway, both those films, 2010. McHale's Navy, 1997, Tron Legacy, 2010. Um, and right next to that, the, the one most recent to that, we have a, a documentary done 60 years ago this year. Um, NBC, Chet Huntley was the narrator. A Grand Glen Canyon Dam documentary. 1959, we have a number of images. It's going to be three or four images, maybe more, from TV shows and movies in 1959. One of the ones I like the best is uh, from the uh, the TV show that was incredibly popular uh, back in the day, 1959, that would have been Highway Patrol, Broderick Crawford. Broderick Crawford played the role of a California Highway Patrol homicide detective. I watched every episode I could as a boy. I just loved that show. And we have an episode called The Hunter. The Hunter, 1959. The Hunter, 60 years ago. Now we have 61 years ago. It was 2020, right? Um, so Broderick Crawford is in the office of a petroleum executive talking to the petroleum executive about the homicide. This is black and white. They, they, were, they were doing the you know, color TV was not ubiquitous back then. Not all shows were in color. It was more, a lot more expensive, and uh, that's simply the way it was. So Crawford's in this office of this petroleum executive talking about the homicide. On the wall behind Broderick Crawford is a very large map of the United States. And it is the Navy map. It is the Navy map. And it's just crystal clear and nice and sharp. We have a break. Call number is 800-313-9443. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. 
We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. We are back, let's go, we're back. Jared Moore here on Tuesday. It is Tuesday, the 7th of January. How about that? My website is thelibertyman.com. Under products, my drop-down menu. Under products, my drop-down menu. You will find a lot. There's a lot there. And uh, I'm a dealer for Amsoil. The first, the first synthetic motor oil. At the moment, I've got not one but two Lincoln Town cars. Uh, I've got uh, my wife's Saturn, and I've got my Kawasaki 1600cc motorcycle. Everything is topped off with Amsoil. Everything. It's the only product I use when it comes to motor oil. And why is that? Because I want the best. My Lincoln Town car has 383,000 miles on it. The older one, the new one, new for me, when I bought it two months ago, had 83,000 miles on it, just like a new car. First thing I did was take it to my mechanic, and I said, I want Amsoil on here, an Amsoil filter, new air filter, new fuel filter, and everything. So um, if you want the best performance from your vehicle, you get slightly better than we're talking about. It. We're talking about 2 or 3% better fuel economy. The engine is running cooler. Uh, you just need to check out the Amsoil products. It's a uh, well-kept secret within racing circles. The professional racers, these men spend tens of thousands of dollars on their engines alone. That even if they have a sponsor, uh, an oil sponsor, uh, they pretend to use the oil sponsor's oil, but they actually use Amsoil in those race cars, those high-performance race cars. And they can't afford to have any issues due to improper lubrication. Okay. Um, this project uh, is, has been moved forward these past four years with the help of the listeners. One person could not possibly watch tens of thousands of movies and TV shows that have been done in the last 60-plus years. That can't be done. It's humanly impossible. That's where all you come in. It's the listeners who've been finding these images in movies and TV shows the past four years, not John Moore. I appreciate it. And when you get the screen capture to me, and it's something that we decide that we can use, you get your choice of any of my six DVDs as a thank you. It's a fun project, and let's keep it moving forward. The earliest image goes back to not a movie or a TV show, but Look Magazine, July 1952, image 17. It's the Navy map. The, the article in Look Magazine, which uh, at that time, Look Magazine was one of the most popular publications in the United States, by the way. It's an article about flying saucers, which uh, were making a lot of news back then. But it's a Navy map. It clearly is a Navy map showing the inland sea and the East Coast underwater, Gulf Coast underwater, and so forth. Clearly it is. Great map. So uh, the project is fun. It's important. Um, what are they doing? They're preconditioning our brains to get ready to accept what's coming in the future. That's what's going on there. I was at one of my high school class reunions a few years back, and one of my female classmates uh, has lived in Florida much of her adult life, most of it. I really didn't know her that well. Most of the women in my class I didn't know very well at all. 
except the cheerleaders because we spent so much time together. But uh, I um, I sat with her and talked to her for a few minutes. And uh, when the once I found out she lived in Florida, I asked her if she knew about the rising sea levels, and turned out she did. Apparently, it's fairly common knowledge among many people in Florida that the entire state will be underwater in the not too distant future. Not really a secret, which doesn't surprise me. People talk even though they may have non-disclosed agreements because of their employment, they still talk. They're going to tell people that they care about and they love uh, something that will help keep them safe. I'm more and more under the belief that the powers that be, these, these, na these national, these world leaders, are in some kind of hurry-up phase to hurry up and complete their fancy new, shiny new world order before they get shut down also by the violent earth changes. Which, of course, they will be. Everything will be shut down. Everything. I don't care what, what kind of resources they have. They'll, they'll just be down in their hidey holes um, staying alive. They won't be messing with us. Above ground. Us barefoot peasants, as I sometimes call us. So they're scrambling around right now in 2020 to... Uh, achieve what they can uh, before everything gets shut down. I wrote about this in my paper. It's a free download of my website. My paper I wrote um, titled No Need for Panic. I wrote that paper initially. I wrote it for my brother and brother. We have a break. Call number is 800 3934 You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back here on Tuesday. It is Tuesday, seventh of January. Here at Republic Broadcasting. My website, my website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. I take about sixty seconds every hour to talk about something that will help so many people. It's so gratifying to be able to help hundreds of people, thousands of people all over the planet. I'm not up to thousands yet, but my friend Tom Berryhill, the manufacturer of the energy cleaner, is up to thousands. And how do we do that? We do it with the energy cleaner. Between sleep issues and arthritis pain issues, we're talking about half the adults in this country. And that's where the energy cleaner comes in. If you've got arthritis pain, joint pain, back pain, yes, the energy cleaner will help. Are you not sleeping well at night? You not know, sleeping as well as I do every night. I, I sleep as great as a small child every night. I pull up my head hits that pillow. Ten minutes later, I'm I'm stone cold. I'm I'm just really really in deep sleep. The energy cleaner will do that for you. Only two hundred eighty-five dollars shipping included to American zip codes. The mattress pads, well, they vary in price. We have twin size, full, queen, king, California king, the handy travel size. In fact, I'm sitting in one of the handy travel sides right now. I'm doing this show. All the details the, uh, are at my website at thelibertyman.com. The patent application information, testimonials from people we know like Steve Whitman are there at my website at thelibertyman.com. Where you can place your order using PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. You can send me a check. My address is at my website. And I have a toll-free order line 24 hours a day. Here it is, twice, slowly, 800 Five nine two nine five four three. Keep in mind, I offer a ninety day money back guarantee. Eight hundred five nine two nine five four three. My webmaster, Tim Spencer, very dear friend, 
he uh, worked on redoing my website. It was not smartphone com compatible. Um, that was an issue because more and more people were accessing the internet through their smartphone. So he undertook to redo completely redo my website. It's been about uh, right at about two years now. It's beautiful, well laid out. You get a lot of compliments on it. Fairly easy to navigate. There's lots there. There is a lot there. I need to contact my f my friend, the former counterintelligence agent, and find out what's going on with him. He's not been getting us updates uh, on the open source intelligence section. I apologize, but um, something's going on there. I need to find out what's going on. Um, and um, right next to that is an interesting article. Uh, the former uh, governor of Colorado I wrote an interesting article about how he would destroy the United States. Um, and um, it's, it's worth reading. In fact, everything on my website <clears throat> is worth reading or watching in case of videos. They really are. They really are. My most recent uh, video is listed there for sale. The heavens are shaking. That was my presentation uh, last May in Cincinnati with Pastor Paul Beckling. It's a four DVD site. You get a lot of material there. Clyde Lewis, myself, Steve Ben Noon, and Pastor Paul Beckley. A four C four DVD set. Um, recorded in Cincinnati, Ohio last May. Standing room only. And I expect that our event in Indianapolis is coming May. First and second will be standing room only. Pastor Beckley sent volunteers out to buy extra folding chairs. We were more than a bit concerned the fire marshal would shut us down or or have uh, about 50 or 60 people leave the room. It, it's, it was a, more than a sellout. And I expect the same thing to happen in, um, in Indianapolis in May. If, you're con if you share my concerns about our future here in this country, and I know m many of you do, probably most of you, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to make sure that you and the people you care about are safe? What does that look like? How do you do that with, within the resources that you've got? Resources being two things, primarily time and money. What do you do? Well, first of all, you need to be away from urban suburban suburban areas. They, are, they would become death traps, literally, not figuratively. Urban, suburban areas, densely populated areas would become death traps in the event that there was massive civil disorder, which would disrupt food deliveries, medicine deliveries. Police may get to the point where they decide to protect their wives and children rather than the general public. They have a higher duty to their wife and children, I think, than they do to their uh, wearing a badge and a gun for, for protecting the public, and they should do that. Regardless, these urban suburban areas, they will become death traps in a massive civil disorder situation. So where does that leave you? That leaves you with finding a safe haven outside urban suburban areas. Ideally, in my opinion, ideally, a hobby farm would be best. Next best would be any place outside this urban suburban areas, regardless of whether it was a hobby farm or not. The main thing is to be away from the cities. Now, what, what else do you want at this, at this location outside the city in the country? Will you want a source of water that's proprietary? Hopefully, it doesn't require the power grid to get the water to you. Most homes in the country these days have a well that takes electricity to make it work. Nothing wrong with that as long as you've got power. As long as the power grid's working, or you have backup power of some kind. There's lots of ways to address that. I'm not going to get into it right now. A spring where you have gravity fed water that you can recover on your property is excellent. The spring at my place puts out a million gallons a day. When we first bought the place 20 years ago, it was still on the Missouri Highway map, which is no longer, which is fine with me. Everybody knows about it locally. 
the Woodlock Spring is well known in this area. One of my neighbors, she's, I think, in her early 90s now. Her home is at the top of the hill from the Woodlock Spring. It, it is a pretty steep hill. A, in fact, a very steep hill. Uh, Blacktop Road, Highway V is in Victor. And she used to walk down to the spring as a younger woman and when she was raising her children and, re- and get water. I don't know how much water she would get and then bring the water back up to her home. I, I assume she had some kind of little wagon as opposed to carrying buckets, but I don't know what she did. But I know it was on foot. So having a, a spring on your property is excellent. Some parts of the country, people recover rainwater. That can work. My parents' home in Jefferson County had a rainwater recovery system. that uh, it, it worked in a good size outbuilding, a garage with an apartment on the end that uh, they recovered rainwater and went into a really big cistern, a concrete cistern, which was maybe uh, 12 by 12 by 12, all underground. Whatever works for you. You need to have your own source of water. Food, obviously food. Freeze-dried food is expensive. It's the best. It's expensive dehydrated food right behind that. Plain old canned food you get from the supermarket. Nothing wrong with that. Being able to grow your own food is, is the best, of course. But I, I now recommend a two-year supply of food. And I've been doing so for a number of years now. I used to recommend a one-year supply of food. Two years is still... Uh, what I recommend. Uh, you don't know what's coming. You don't know how long you're going to need that food supply. You don't know what kind of unexpected guests are going to show up. So two years is a, is a nice uh, goal to have. And I know for some of you listeners out there, it's not going to be easy. You're, you're financially strapped. Living on Social Security disability or, or, or whatever it might be. I understand that. I appreciate that. There's still things you can do. You can get uh, empty two-liter soda bottles, rinse them out properly, and then fill them with potable water. Even people with limited financial means, they can still buy an extra bag of rice, an extra bag of beans whenever they go to the supermarket, looking at a dollar here, a dollar there. Nobody said it would be easy. And make sure you've got that safe haven, whatever it takes. Maybe you can't buy a place on one hand. On the other, maybe there's a a relative or a friend, somebody you go to church with, somebody you went to school with, somebody you were in the military with, somebody you've known and trusted for some period of time that would be delighted to have you as a guest, especially if you were a helpful guest and could do work around the place, whatever that work might be. Maybe gardening, maybe animal husbandry, maybe mechanical work, maybe child care, maybe house cleaning, cooking, whatever it might be. If you're, if you have skills that can be an asset, they might just be delighted to have you there as a guest during a crisis. That has to be set up in advance. Just don't show up cold when the lights go out. That would not be wise. That would not be wise at all. You may find yourself being rejected or are accepted grudgingly. That's not good either. So these plans have to be set up in advance. One medical doctor I work with, I I set up an agreement for him to be taken in uh, to a safe location. Uh, It was all set up and planned and and laid out. Uh, Those plans have since changed because of things have changed, but I'll be working with him again to set up another safe haven for him and his family. Uh, any medical doctor is going to be uh, a high-value asset in any community for obvious reasons. What they, what they know when it comes to helping people recover from injuries and other things is beyond compare. There's people with similar skill sets that are not medical doctors, U.S. Navy corpsmen, Army Special Forces medics, Registered nurses have a lot of skills. There's, there's, and, of course, paramedics and EMTs. There's a lot of people with high-level life-saving skills, and they all have 
a lot of value in a, in a long-term or even a short-term crisis because of those skill sets. Your team should have at least one person like that. If it doesn't, you know, one, when somebody in your team needs to start learning those skills, ASAP. You can take a paramedic course at low junior college. We sign up far enough in advance. You know, typically, young people sign up for those classes a year in advance because they want to have a career and a paycheck. And um, it, it's... And that's true in most places, most of the time. Not all places, all the time, but many places. It's uh, really, uh, a waiting list to sign up for a paramedic course. And at entry level, of course, you can always take first aid, Red Cross first aid. There's first aid classes given in hospitals, first aid classes given by fire departments. Junior college will have or adult evening classes. They have uh, first aid classes and CPR. Once you have the training, you certainly should have equipment that you can handle. Equipment comparable to your skill level. It would be dangerous, possibly life-threatening to use equipment you're not qualified to use. And it would be a crying shame to uh, have a situation where you had skills but didn't have the, the uh, proper equipment to go along with your skill sets. So the, the, the two go hand in glove. The first aid CPR training and the equipment equal to your skill level. The more skills you have, the more equipment you're qualified to, to uh, use and the more potential you have for saving a life. Just imagine yourself. You're standing next to somebody you really love, you've suffered a severe chainsaw injury, and you don't have the skills to save their life, to stop the bleeding, and to treat for shock. You don't have those skills because you didn't follow John Moore's advice and get first aid training and CPR and get any equipment and supplies to go along with it. You heard me on the radio a year ago, five years ago. You heard me ad advocating that you get first aid training and CPR, advocating that you get your first aid kit, your supplies, your equipment, and you didn't do it. So the person you love more than anything in the world is lying there in front of you bleeding out and dying because you don't know how to save their life. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. Of course it's possible. It doesn't have to be a chainsaw accident. Motor vehicle accidents can be just as deadly, obviously. Any number of things can be life-threatening. So the word to the wise is, get that first aid CPR training now. Get the supplies to go along with it now. And just keep them with you. I keep my first aid kit in my vehicle with me. I transferred first aid kit I kept in my older town car into the new town car the first day I got it. Started driving it on the public roads. I, I have not had to use it yet. It's come close a couple of times where I would come upon a scene and, and uh, fortunately a, a healthcare professional was already there taking care of the injured people and I, I didn't need to help. I offered to help but they had it under control. So there's no, no point in me um, intervening when the, the responder already had it under control. But for me, it's peace of mind knowing it's in there, knowing that if I need it, I got it. That's real peace of mind for me, knowing that it's there. What's coming in the future? That's always the big question. People want to know, John, when's it going to happen? What's it? Violent earth changes, civil war, I don't know. I know the possibilities. I know the people that do know aren't talking, they're not going to talk. That's not going to happen. Sometimes we get some leaks from insiders, and I appreciate those. Dave Hodge has been a, a, a great resource in that regard. He has some excellent sources reporting to him, and, and Dave Hodge's reports are, quite frankly, very disturbing. They really are. Mainly because it's Dave, and I know Dave. I know Dave. I've, I've, I've known Dave personally now for about eight or ten years. 
And he's a good guy. He's a stand-up guy. And he's solid. We have a break. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. We are back. Let's come to Tara Moore here on Tuesday, the seventh uh, of January. Preparedness has been my mantra for a really, really long time. I first got interested in preparedness uh, in a serious manner after my daughter was born, nineteen seventy-three, and uh, by nineteen seventy-seven, I was offering preparedness consultations to the general public. I did my first paid consultation uh, 43 years ago, the summer of 1977, 43 years ago. So I've been at this a long time. There weren't many people doing it back in 1977, uh, not very many at all. The term prepper did not exist for decades into the future, as you all know. Um, and back then in 77, uh, uh, it was not something that very many people thought about at all. It's still not, even though it's become pretty mainstream with TV shows and, and so forth. Uh, the TV shows um, are, I don't think very much of them, but it has become pretty mainstream. If you're interested in preparedness and you listen to this radio show, you most likely are interested in preparedness. The most important thing you can do, the single most important thing you do, is your spiritual preparedness. It really is. Above and beyond anything and everything else. It's not my job as a radio talk show host to tell you what your spiritual belief should be. Far from it. I will advise you, though, that that part of your life is very important, needs to be addressed, needs to become part of your daily life, and needs to happen right now. Seriously, it does. So I hope people will pay heed to that, if nothing else. What's the cost of that? No, no cost. It takes your time, obviously, to work on your spiritual preparedness, to get right with Jesus in the, in the case of a Christian. A little time, some diligence, no money. And it needs to be part of your daily life. It really does. And I hope it becomes that. If you've overlooked it, I overlooked it for most of my young adult life, my 20s and 30s and 40s, I came back to Jesus. When I got elected commander of the militia for St. Louis City and County, I fell to my knees because I knew I was so far in my, over my head with that responsibility I couldn't see daylight. And I'm glad that I did. I'm truly glad that I did. That's 25 years ago, 1994. 26 years ago now. So make that make that a priority. Seriously, make spiritual preparedness a priority. That really needs to happen. The top of the hour break coming up here uh, in less than two minutes. Leon Green will be with us. Leon will be with us on the cruise. Between Leon and I, there's not much we don't know about preparedness. 
Uh, Leon's a big time prepper. We'll be talking about doTERRA essential oils and Lord knows what because uh, our conversations with Leon and I, we go all over the map. Literally, every week we go all over the map. And it'll, it's always fun to have Leon on board. And uh, of course, we'll take your questions, calls, and comments at 800 313 9443. Stay tuned. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on Tuesday, the 7th of January. Perfect tip of the day. I want to encourage people to support President Trump. Do that by helping conservative voters, your friends that support them already, to get registered to vote. That's what really needs to happen. We have patiently waiting in the green room, my friend Leon Green. Leon is a gentleman who began a quest about 10 plus years ago to become quite knowledgeable in anything and everything to do with doTERRA essential oils and how they can help people have the healthy, fun, full, productive life we all want to have. And he's at front site getting ready to do some training that I'm jealous he's there and I'm not. And he's got about 45 minutes to be with us. Good morning, Leon. Good morning, John. How are you doing, sir? Really good. Well, what fun adventure training are you doing today, sir? Well, today we're doing the advanced um, integrated, so it's more of a thinking class. You know, you know, do you necessarily have to engage with projectiles all the time? So, you know, ways, you know, methods of escape. I mean, I remember taking this class a year ago, and the person was a, a retired marine, or a prior uh, marine, and he, you know, he 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 had a setup. So, we, you know, you're in a urinal. And you're standing there, and three guys get to get you. What do you do? You won't have time to get your gun when your hands are occupied. So you had to you had to be very creative. So you know, it's it's a very very good course. And today we're going to be focusing on rifles. Yesterday was handguns, but um, then I have eight other courses coming in the next um, four four and a half weeks, and then shot shows thrown in in between that. And just last week I was up in Park City, and we were um. I went skiing, you know, four days in advance, and we did snowshoeing, and I'd never done that up and down, you know, five miles of hills. So you can see the shortcomings of, you know, different calibers and different qualities, like the difference between freeze-dried food and canned food, you know, seven years down the road, of, you know, nutritive value. So then they shot two elk. First guy, he knew what he was doing. He dropped the elk right, right where she stood. The other man, apparently he didn't zero his rifle very well because he missed Fourteen times. I can't believe it. I watched it on, on watched it live through a, a set of binoculars. I'm like, wow. And it was it was daunting thinking that if he had to feed his family, what, they what would have distance? starved. At what distance what, was he missing? Oh, he was uh, 200 yards away. Well, and I don't yards. know if he not. No, less than 200 yards. So that's really an easy less shot. Less than 200. How yes, humiliating! Sir, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> It's not so like walking thinking, out. You know, it's not like walking out the back door and, and taking a shot at a, at a squirrel because uh, hundreds of dollars, possibly thousands of dollars, were spent to travel to the location if he's out of state. Very expensive uh, licensing procedure and permits for hunting elk. Uh, uh, that uh, to spend all that money and the time and not take the trouble or the time to. Properly sight in your firearm. That's just simply unacceptable and very humiliating. Uh, oh, I agree with you 100%. You know, he, he had left before, you know, the 18 guys got a chance to talk to him, but you could hear the the fire, uh, the, um, the shots throughout the uh, valley. Even though he had a, a suppressor or a can on, you know, you could still hear him and, because we were about 600, 800 yards away. But um, it was very evident that. Either he was a very bad shot, or his it was he could have knocked it, you know, dropping. And it was much of a snow was anywhere from two feet to five feet deep, depending on where you were. And you know, theoretically, I you know I saw many people fall down and get stuck under trees. And um, you know, he could have knocked the the optics. But you know, after the first set of shots, you should you should see where you're off very quickly. And I can't believe this this dumb cow elk, you know, stood around that long after she saw. Her. The, her sister get whacked, you know, within within you know twenty yards of her, and it's, it, it was just and, and you know it was a blessing for him, but you know you you can't 
assume that kind of luck in the future because if he had to feed five people in the family and he was alone, they would die based on that based on that right. mistake. Right, right. Well, uh, that's a good that's a good heads up there because uh, you know my people would have an expectation that if you're at a point in your hunting career where you're going to uh, I don't know if this man was up from out of state or not or not, but travel some distance. Uh, was it a guided hunt? Was it, or was he on his own? No, no. It was, you know, we we had uh, we had op four and op opposing forces in the in the area. Once we um, shot the elk, then they were released. And so, it was not guided. It was the owner of the property, you know, in BLM property. They had two okay. tags. And so they, and and one thing, and this is one thing that people don't think about is we not only had the opposing force, but we had seven other hunters in the same valleys. Just north of, I mean, you could see the uh, Capitol building of Utah um, less than five miles away. That's how close we were. But there were elk all over the place. And there were other hunters. And one guy said, yeah, we already shot one. we got to go chase her down. And so he walked right through us. You know, we had camo on and we had everything tricked out. And no orange, you know, we didn't have the orange tags on because we weren't hunting. But, you know, my concern was somebody who was buck as buck fever is going to take a shot at this because we're moving and we look like, you know, we are, we're kitted Close up. Enough. As, <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Looks like an elk to me. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yeah, right. Really. I see. So, well, um, uh, going back to the man, did he hit the elk on a 14th shot or not? Yes, sir. He did. I don't know how, how, and I, I didn't get to find out all, all the information because, yeah, it was dumb luck, but, you know, you can't trust your, 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 uh, your safety and security of your family to dumb luck because, um, you know, Murphy's alive and well, especially in combat. Well, um, let's segue that to uh, reality here uh, for the rest of us. Uh, by the time hostilities began World War II, there was not a deer left in the state of Missouri. They'd all been hunted to extinction, really, during the what was called the Depression. Uh Following World War II, the Missouri deer herd had to be really reestablished by the Missouri Conservation Commission by bringing in deer from other places. Um, point being, any severe crisis, uh, the large game, uh, deer, elk, moose, antelope, and so forth, they'll be hunted out in two years or less, and they'll be, that'll be, that'll be over. Um, leaving small game I agree. behind, yeah, leaving leaving behind small game rabbits and squirrels and whatever else any any mammal can be eaten although I, I think an armadillo would be pretty disgusting um, <laughs> and some armadillos south of us uh, do carry um, very dangerous diseases um, but uh, people will be well advised to uh, be ready to uh, raise rabbits and and, uh, and and chickens and ducks and geese and whatever they have on their own premises, because hunting is something that won't last long term, will it? Absolutely. Matter of fact, I stayed here. He has a bunkhouse, and I'll send you pictures. You know, I, I woke up after skiing, you know, for five days, and I heard a bunch of noise outside, and, and I, it did not sound like humans walking up these steps, wooden steps. I look out the window, and there were three turkeys on this pad, and they were clucking up the storm and making all this noise. And then I didn't move too fast because I want to get pictures because I was astounded how close they were. You know, the bed, the interior of the glass um, bunkhouse was within 18 feet of the, the turkeys outside the window. And so I'm looking oh. out the window, and, and and then they see me after I've you know I've done three minutes of video and pictures. They jump down, go around the house, and there's a total of 12. Um, there was both Marion, oh, I'm sorry, they were all Rio Grande turkeys that were reintroduced back in 1984 in Utah. I learned all this, at, you know, while I'm watching these birds. And I was thinking, boy, we'd love to take those. And I found out he has tags for those two. And we, he said, yeah, both, you know, there, he had more than one tag for depredation because of how, how, how evasive they are. And he has his own turkey um, livestock at, at the property. So what happens? Um, I take pictures and show it to him. He's like, yeah, um, maybe tomorrow morning we'll get up and you can use 22s and we can take them out. And I was like, oh, I would love to do that. But in his freezer, he has five elk. And we took two that day. So I was thinking, 
you know, with with the million plus people in Salt Lake City, you're right. They won't have any livestock, any wildlife. You know, in a matter of you say two years, I would venture to say it'd be much faster than that. Even even with luck, those people are going to um, take out the uh, wildlife, and all the animals are going to take off quickly, knowing that it's no, it's always hunting season. Every day it's going to be hunting season. Now, in, in Yugoslavia, uh, when the civil war was taking place there between the Christians and the Muslims. You couldn't find you couldn't find a bird to eat. Everything was was shot and killed and eaten. It was just uh, an absolute uh, ecological disaster in that regard. Um, well, Leon, uh, I assume you've got oils with you. you. You don't travel any place without your oils, do you, sir? That's the truth. Matter of fact, I use Deep Blue as prophylactic for the pain because I would I skied all all five days and. It was all eight hours. The temperatures were in the 20, 25, and I saw it one time, it was 15, and that was in the daytime at Park City. And I was like, this is crazy cold. And I, I normally don't have to wear, you know, those masks, and I don't like to wear them. Everybody was, you know, bundled up. And so you use, I use the Deep Blue, which is a proprietary rub by doTERRA for pain and um, inflammation and soreness. And so, you know, if you're skiing for eight hours straight, doing moguls, doing jumps, and, you know, two feet of powder, you get tired very quickly. So I did it before I, I went skiing and then after. Took hot showers, enjoyed that. But, yes, I have the oils with me. And when you do that kind of stress to your body, whether you're carrying water up the up a hill in a little red wagon in the spring, or I heard you last week or last, last, last class or last, last hour, right? hour talking right. about, yep. And then or if you're skiing or if you're cutting wood. And, boy, there are so... You know, when you're, when you're trudging around, one thing I thought about is buy more meat protein now. Because if I'm expecting to go hunting, you know, two years into the collapse, uh, it's going to be very, very rare that you're going to have any fresh meat. So if you don't have any meat in advance, you know, tuna cans are going to be dreams because of the fact that you're not going to have the ability to go fish. And they're not going to restock the lakes. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just go fishing. Well, the fisheries are going to stop. The fish right. are going to die anyways because natural predation. And, I mean, the other animals are going to have to eat them, the bears, the coyotes, the, the birds. And so and then now you have the added humans with no restocking. They're going to be gone too. So it is going to be, like you said, an ec- ecological collapse too or apocalypse. It, it will be. It will be. You know, I've done a little bit of, snow, of snowshoeing, enough to know that it's one of the most strenuous things a human being can do. Uh, and even on flat ground, let alone going uphill. Uh, would you agree with that statement, sir? Yes, sir. There was some, yes, without going in depth, but there of the twelve guys as we were getting chased, they had to carry eighty. You know, these these hind hind quarters were about eighty pounds, totally, um, and they they gutted it there, two separate sites, down the hill. Those guys were going downhill into uh, into the city. But we had to lead them away, and we had to go up to. Back up the um, 2,000 foot, 1,000 foot vertical while we're being chased at and being shot at with lasers. And so um, you would know if you got hit because your your alarms would go off. And so if you were in shape and you were stuck under trees or your equipment failed, which mine did several times, you know you would be out of luck. And I could I could see you getting killed because your equipment failure. Easily, and I know you describe, being in Vietnam describe, at the Tet. Describe some equipment failure so people know what you're talking about, sir. Yeah, so in this case, the, the snowshoes themselves. You know, there are high end ones and there's cheap ones, and I got some at Costco and I got some at this um, at this shop. And so I, instead of you know doing and this is where preparedness and actually doing what I was talk, we always talk about, actually test your night vision goggles, test your stuff. Well, I had thermals and they were good up close, but at a mile. They don't help at all, and um, because you can't dif- differentiate at the distance. So the failure I had not were with the thermals, but the straps on the inexpensive Costco ones kept popping out. So you're trying to walk with you know 40 pounds and your your rocket 30 pounds of water and everything else, and your shoe pops out. Well, now you're being chased by people, and you know the first day I used the walking sticks, walking poles. The second day. I just said, okay, I'm going to have to use other techniques, and you'd also ditch your your um, the end of the laser rifle into the snow, 
because they had single point slings, which I don't advocate whatsoever. They're great on the range for convenience. They stink in, in, in practical use of mud, rain, water, and snow. And so many times you'd get stuck in there, ice would get impacted in there along with, you know, all the other guys, and they had to scrape it out. Well, when you're getting shot at, you can't scrape it out. So, yes, I would definitely have some condoms. I'd strap on live ones because I, I realized I, I could throw those away. You know, you can shoot right through them. But you can't shoot through the ice if you actually hit anybody with the laser. So, in essence, you are out of out of, out of of pocket and you're, you're, you're down. And that happened six or seven times with people throughout. It happened to me six times. It happened to other people. Probably about 15, 20, just looking at them, struggling and being stuck under trees. And I, and I thought, you know, this is this is where practicality. You have to know your equipment. You have to test it before you go in the field because you don't want to learn these things when you're getting shot at, for sure. Absolutely. Well, that's why we train is to find out what works and what doesn't work, and so that when the when the balloon goes up, we're prepared to deal with it with equipment that we in fact we know that it works and we can trust it. Now, absolutely. If, before and after the snowshoeing event, uh, how much deep blue did you use, Leon? Oh, <laughs> I used the vast majority of it, you know, skiing, because, you know, uh, four days straight skiing, you know, and, and we're talking about of the tube that I think is four ounces. I, I may have used a quarter of the tube, and I was staying at a, um Airbnb hostel there, so there were a bunch of other people there that had the same aches and pains, but they didn't have any relief. They were, they were talking about just um, headache medicine and things like that, and... I said, um, you know, I offered to a couple of people, and they're like, wow, where do I get that stuff? So, you know, um, it was a, you know, I, I used a small amount of that, and then I used, I took some peppermint with me on the on the lifts because it helps oxygenate your blood, and it's a vasodilator, so it's phenomenal for mental clarity. So I was doing that often throughout the day, the four days. So I didn't use a ton of the deep blue, but that's another thing is I'm going to buy the tubes, not the tubes. They have these big uh, dispensers. And they're huge, but that's what you'd use like at a retreat where you have, you know, 30 people um, that are going to be doing wood, gardening, um, training, um, right. all the things that are necessary in a, in a is hobby it, farm. Is it uh, this big dispenser? Is a, a pump type uh, contraption? I'm yes, sir. Familiar. Yes, sir. It's a big pump type contraption. You can buy it naturally from doTERRA with the discount. And I think it's like 180. But, um, when you have pain, it's 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 crucial. Very valuable. Here's our break. Call number is eight hundred three one three nine four four three. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. 
click the donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. J.R. Moore here on Tuesday. It is Tuesday, the 7th of January. My website is thelibertyman.com. You can buy tickets for my up to coming, uh, two upcoming speaking engagements. The first one is just a month away, Saturday, February 8th in Orlando. And then right next to that, uh, May the second, 1st and 2nd in Indianapolis. Uh, the tickets are available for sale at both events. I hope to see a lot of you there. We're talking about doTERRA essential oils, among other things among snowshoeing and, and other related and unrelated matters. At my website at thelibertyman.com, under products, there's a drop-down menu. You just click on products and the drop-down menu. You can go down the fourth one down is doTERRA oils. That's your beginning point. That's where you get started, is at the website, my uh, landing page for doTERRA. So that's where you can get the oils and get some knowledge. The second thing you want to do is get two editions of the same book. The book, the title of the book is Modern Essentials. Simple two-word title, Modern Essentials. You're going to want the most recent edition, the 11th edition published last September, and the 5th edition. Why would you want two editions? Good question, John. Here's why. The 5th edition says things that the publishers are no longer allowed to say because of the Food and Drug Administration. So they both have great value. Uh, I'm uh, in the 5th edition of Frequently, looking things up in the index, and I'm in the 11th edition to see what the latest and greatest new oils are from doTERRA. So that's the two books that you need. Now, if you need a private consultation about these oils, health-related matters, if you want to learn how to start your own business selling doTERRA oils to the people that you know and, and care about, well, then you need to talk to Leon, and Leon has graciously made himself available for private consultations. Leon, what's your telephone number, please? It is 303-495-2188. That's Mountain Time. Okay. 303-495-2188, Mountain Time. If he doesn't pick up because he's off doing something fun and adventurous that I'm jealous of, then just leave a message, and he'll get back with you. Um your, uh, your training today is going to be more of a classroom uh, type situation, it sounds like, Leon. And that, there's a lot of value no, to that. <laughs> we're, out in the, we're out in the cold. I wish it was in the classroom right now. Oh. After, after, after the class is over at 5, and tomorrow we have a night shoot, um, I'm going to be taking some medical classes they have here. You know, they just started in the last year. And you know, once you've taken the first class with them, you can take all the subsequent ones. So I've, I've seen five iterations. And these are taught by people. One gentleman, um, his name is Bill Kaplis. He was there during the night of the Mandalay shooting in Las Vegas. So he's supposed to get off at 10 o'clock, and he ended up getting off the next morning at 8, covered in blood. And he had to help save hundreds of people. So, yes, um, that's the caliber of training. And then North American Rescue, who makes the cat um, turner kits, are up in Vegas. And so they have access to that training, too. So I got to go do that. We went to a FEMA site that was demolished, and we had to... We had to pull people out of those. You know, this is a moulage and fake blood, but it was very graphic when you're bent over trying to do a cat tourniquet in a culvert that's only, you know, three feet wide, and the kid is in there screaming, and you see blood coming down his leg. So, you know, that's the kind of training. So tonight I'm going to stay warm after the, train, the day class in the oh. cold and go, you know, sit through with the medical classes for the next four or five days and actually several weeks So because there will be even changes in the next five weeks because they keep tweaking it to make it better. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Well, uh, good for you, sir. Good for you. Uh, the oils play a critical role in health and well-being in normal times, which is what we have right now. And during a crisis, they're even more important because people will be cut off from the things they normally would use, such as going to the emergency room, going to the family doctor, going to the pharmacy uh, to get other uh, items. Uh, whatever you have, when a crisis begins, is all you're going to have, right, Lynn? 
Absolutely. And the same thing applied with water when we were on the side of the mountain. And that was one of the things. We actually had a live survival issue. If you don't have the oils now or very quickly, and anything goes south based on what John and um, uh, the Drudge Report and all the other people that you listen to and learn from, um, you will not have any, any respite. Whatever you have is all you have, whether it's ammo, night vision, food, and water. You have to have clean water because, you know, it's, it's essential. And so um, while we were going back up the hill, not the hill, the mountain, because it's, you know, a 1,800-foot ascent in snow with three feet and plus being chased, um, what happened was one guy started having uh, dehydration issues. And then he, he, we, it started getting worse. And I asked him, when's the last time you, you urinated? He said, oh, this morning. And this was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And so we went a little bit further and found out that we stopped and started heating up some water. He started throwing up on the mountain. And they were going to call in a, a snowshoe, not a snowshoe, but, a, but bring in a snowmobile to bring it out, even though it was, it said, you know, um, no motorized because of how bad it was. He started throwing up and they started going downhill. He was getting not very nauseous before he threw up and then his legs started cramping up. So, you know, he may have drunk enough, drunk enough water in the morning, but he did not have enough snow liquid in his, his, his body. Later, his legs started cramping up. Well, those are all and classic signs of dehydration and they really are. We have sure. a break. We'll be right back after the break and Leon will be with us in about 15 more. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting facebook.com slash republic broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. Tara Moore here on Tuesday, the 7th of January here at Republic Broadcasting. My website is thelibertyman.com. There's a lot there. You can spend a lot of time at my website reading articles, looking at videos, educating yourself, informing yourself, maybe things that might make you uh, entertained, things that might make you angry. There's a lot there. Reading about the vaccines, uh, I hope, would make you angry <laughs> to find out what's, what they're doing to us and our children. Also, on my website, if you have arthritis pain, there's something there that will help you under products. Drop down menu, the energy cleaner. I talk about the energy cleaner about 60 seconds every hour. I do that because I want to help people. We need healthy, strong, vigorous Americans to make America great again to be ready for what's coming at us, the Energy Cleaner will help. If you've got arthritis pain, it will help. Joint pain, back pain, the Energy Cleaner will help. You want to sleep as good as a small child every night like I do, the Energy Cleaner will help. Are you a Doubting Thomas? I encourage that. I have no fear of you being a Doubting Thomas. That's why I offer a 90-day money-back guarantee. You'll find out in about 72 hours if the Energy Cleaner will help you or not. Sometimes it's another day, but typically two to three days, and you'll you'll forget relief. 90-day money-back guarantee. I stand behind it with that with that personally on the, on the energy cleaner. 
So check out the details at my website. We can place your order for the energy cleaner, the mattress pads that go with it. You can use MasterCard, PayPal, Visa. You can call my toll-free order line 24 hours a day to place your order. Here it is, 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. Visiting with Leon Green for another 10 minutes or so before he runs off for some training. And um, if you've got a question or comment, give us a call at 800-313-9443. Well, Leon, a lot of people could use another stream of income, couldn't they, sir? Yes, sir. I I agree. Having multiple income streams is crucial, especially when you get to the point of having passive residual income. That makes a huge... That means you can focus on other things that are more important to you and to your family. So, you know, if you have that kind of flexibility, that's why I'm able to go on all these adventure trainings because... Doterra has blessed me immensely in the last eight years. And so, yes, we're going to be together in a month and a half, you know, in St. Martin and Bahamas and Puerto Rico to be able it to not, it's share. Not a, not a month and a half, man. It's only four weeks away. Oh, boy. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> in, in fact, my presentation in Orlando is exactly four weeks from tomorrow, the 8th of February. Nice. And we leave the next day. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, yes, uh, having another stream of income is important for many people. Uh, you don't have to be buying inventory. That's one of the things I look for in any uh, thing of this nature. Is, is it gonna, am I going to have to buy anything? No, I don't have to buy anything. I, you have to get a starter kit, which is a good thing to have anyway for yourself and your personal use. That's not a big deal. That's 100 bucks, And uh, just get started and... You get these books and, and educate yourself about the oils using the books, and you're off to the races after that, aren't you, aren't you Leon? Yes, but let me, let me qualify this. If, if you want to do the business, um, yeah, you have to have, you know, you have, to have, you have your own accounts. But, um, the, you know, people can always buy the oils just as much as they like. You know, they can get the diamond kit, which has everything doTERRA has ever made, and you can get this, the smallest kit. But, um... Once you, if you realize you want to do this as a business and they're going to send you a check of a thousand, eight thousand, I have people on my team that have over $25,000 checks monthly. The only requirement by the company is that you have to have an order, an loyalty rewards order of at least $100 PV. If you have that in and you get a check of $8,000, um, that is all your money. There have been people who've lost out on, you know, their check of 3000 because they didn't have that simple order of hundred dollars so that's the only criteria if you want to get paid if you don't care about the money you can donate it you can just leave it in the account as a matter of fact i remember when you first started talking about it you didn't know how, how much money it was coming to you that um i said look the money's gonna stay in your account until you either call them or they mail you a check or do direct deposit once that, once you were able to do that and so um that's the only criteria. But if you just want to get the oil to protect your family, your friends, and start building up your own stock to protect yourself, there is no obligation. You can buy as much as you want, wait a year and buy some more. But that there's no. But for the business, if you want to get a check, you know that's the only criteria is that you have an order of at least a hundred dollars per month. And right, that's for oil for you personally. But you don't have to buy inventory to sell to other people. That's what I was referring to. No, no, no. And that's and that's what makes DoTerra awesome is that you. Uh, there is no inventory. You don't have to worry about. I have lots of people who want to do it at their shops, so they they worried about pilferage, both from the employees and um, and and you know wandering customers. So I give them empty bottles, and they have those bottles, so they can smell them, they can taste them if they want, and that's on the shelf. And if a empty body of uh, empty bottle of peppermint walks away, they don't care because you know it's it was just a glass bottle with a little bit of residual oil on it. So, you know, there's you know no taxes. You don't have to worry about dealing with state taxes and shipping and breakage. All of it's done by the company and it's done online. So it's it's the ideal business in that it is very helpful to the customer. It is very easy as a business person because I don't have to inventory all these oils. If if UPS breaks it or the post office breaks it because of carelessness, the company will ship another bottle to the individual and it's done right. automatically once you find it. So it's it's ideal that you don't have to worry about having the right. typical if, vagaries of having it. If somebody buys doTERRA oil from John Moore's website, John Moore never sees the oil. John Moore never touches the oil. John Moore never ships the oil. That's all done by doTERRA, and I really like that, Leon. 
Yes, sir. Exactly. And so, right. yeah, it, it is. It is I my capacity. So, so, yeah, so the one thing is, I would, right, there isn't a hundred dollar investment every month for oils that that you get for yourself, which is a good thing because you, know, you build up an inventory over time, an inventory of oils that you will need. Uh, for the present time and need for the future. Oils that can be used by your children, even great-grandchildren, right, Leon? Absolutely. And the advantage, of, you know, in, in, while you have that stock, think about it. If, if somebody said, look, you need to buy 800 gallons of water and have it stocked with water preserver for a good five years and get two years of freeze-dried um, organic um, freeze-dried food, and that's going to be $8,000. You'd look at them and you'd balk. But if you were doing it $100 a month, over how many months would it take for you to stock up to that, both in the water and the food, whether it's ammo and everything else? So if you do things incrementally, it's like dollar cost averaging. You're going to need these oils in the future, and you can pass them on to your great-grandchildren, and they'll still be viable as long as the cool door can dry, just like food and ammo will be. That's right. Food will last 30 years properly stored. But the oils will last. They found oils in King Tut's tomb that's over 3,500 years old, and it was still viable. So the oils are a way to protect yourself now from pain and all the issues, soreness and medical issues that you deal with, as well with when you no longer have access to the, um, the pharmacies because they're closed due to whatever kind of calamity um, besets us. Absolutely. Well, you got your heads up here, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to have optimal health, uh, begin substituting healthy, safe essential oils. Is substituting them for dangerous, expensive pharmaceutical products. Possibly have another stream of income. That's some, certainly an option. People may or may not want to exercise. Uh, do those two things I mentioned earlier. Go to my website. Uh, go to my DoTerra uh, landing page there under products. Get yourself a copy of the book, Modern Essentials, 5th edition, Modern Essentials, 11th edition. And if you do want to talk to Leon, he will make himself available. Leave a message. He's, he's a busy guy. 303-495-2188. Leon, I know you got to scoot out of there and uh, get to your training class. Um, I want to thank you for being with us. And we look forward. Will we have you back next Tuesday, sir? Yes, sir. I'll be in another different training, and I'll, I'm going to try to send you pictures of the turkeys, the, the 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 vertical, and also some of the training I've done out here, so you can see the the caliber, and also you know the five the five elk they have hanging in their freezer. So you know it doesn't take very long for us to annihilate the um, the wildlife, and that's where having the freeze dried food. And I even picked up one of these uh, Harvest Right freeze dried dehydrators out of Idaho. It's being shipped to me now. And that allows me to have my own organic food, the food I like, the flavors I like, that's going to be good for 30 years. So I'm excited about that. And, and people are like, why would you spend three grand on that? Well, I spent much more on the other, you know, the, the other stuff, Thrive, Legacy, Wise, Mountain House. And I'm like, right. you know, why don't I have it? Oh, it's organic because I made it. Right, right. Well, I don't know about the turkeys out there, but the turkeys here in Missouri are skinny little things. They look like they're hardly worth oh. going after. But uh, maybe, maybe you got some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty pitiful. Missouri wild turkeys are pretty pitiful looking. They're skinny little things. Um, no, I, I, well, great. I, I would be eating. All right. Well, I will talk to you next week, and I'll send you pictures when I get a chance. Thank and, you, Lance. And Appreciate yes, look, welcome. Get prepared and get prepared now because time is of the essence. It is. It is. Thank you, sir. Have a good time. Thank you. Leon Green. What a guy. Thank you, sir. Um, Leon, of course, is going with us on the cruise. Um, we'll be scheduling our next two cruises soon, uh, which will be February 2021 for the next Caribbean cruise and uh, July of 2021 for our first Alaskan cruise. I was hoping to schedule our first Alaskan cruise this coming July, but I came to find out it's already too late. These cabins book way in advance, um, and it's just the nature of that business. I was not aware of that till a few days ago. All right. If you got a question or comment, we do have open lines at 800-313-9443. The essential oils, they're in the Bible more than 300 times. We just finished a Christmas celebration. What did the three wise men bring? Gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, frankincense, the reputation of frankincense, I should say, within the uh, community of people who understand and use essential oils, frankincense is the king of the oils. Uh, there's a saying within the community of people who use oils, when in doubt, if you don't know what to use, if you really don't know what to use, use frankincense. That's how well thought of frankincense is. Myrrh is another oil that has a lot of very practical uses. I don't have those in front of me, but myrrh is a very useful essential oil as well. And doTERRA keeps adding every year, adding more oils to the oils that they offer to their customers. They're very picky about what they use. It has to be organic. It has to be pure. It has to be very concentrated and very strong, or it doesn't get the, in the inventory of the Terra oils. It simply doesn't make it. Their annual convention is every September. That's when they introduce the new edition of Modern Essentials. That's when they introduce the new oils that they've uh, prepared for marketing. It's a, re it's, a, it's a real deal. The Terra oils is the real deal. The reason they're growing so fast because they are the real deal, because their oils help people uh, maintain health and to recover lost health safely, effectively. I was talking to a friend about the, uh, the cost of the oils, and, and my friend says, well, John, you know, these oils are so expensive. And I said, compared to what? Compared to what are they expensive? You know, when the instructions say you use one or two or three drops, they mean one drop or two drops or three drops. It's a bit counterintuitive to what we normally think of when it comes to things health-related, that something so tiny as one drop of one essential oils can be of a huge benefit, but it, it certainly can be and routinely is. Routinely. So when you look at the cost per drop compared to the cost of those little brown bottles, uh, then it starts to make more sense as to the effectiveness of the oils versus the cost. And going back to what my friend said when, I, when my response was, compared to what? That was, that was the real question. Compared to what? You're comparing the cost of these oils to expensive, dangerous pharmaceutical products? Really? That's what you're doing? Excuse me. Excuse me. But something's really wrong here. You know, pharmaceutical products are very dangerous and they're very expensive. And they don't work, the majority of them. They're good at covering up symptoms. That's what they're made to do, is to make symptoms go away. Are they providing health and healing? Rarely. Rarely are they doing that. But the oils are the real deal. That's why human beings have been using these oils for so many thousands of years. King's Tut, King Tut's tomb was, what, 3,500 years old? The oils have been around a long time before that. A long time. Thousands of years. Yeah. So, you need to study up on this. You need to do what I do. You need to do what Leanna does as well. Leon and I are both pretty healthy guys. I'm 72 years old. I begin my training this month to compete in the Senior Olympics running the 100-meter dash. I wanted to last year, but my uh, caregiving uh, responsibilities for my now-deceased wife uh, took precedence over that, so I wasn't able to train or compete, either one. That's okay. Uh, I did my duty. I took care of my lovely wife until she breathed her last breath and now I'm, I'm back to doing the things that I want to do for myself. Of course, that's one of the, what, I, what I wanted to do then was to be with her. I would not have given that up for anything. But here I am, 72 years old, preparing to run the 100-meter dash. My goal is to uh, run under 16 seconds. Uh, I ran under 16 seconds the last time I competed. That was I was age 60 then. And... Um, Yes, that's a, that's a good goal, is to run a 100-meter dash under 16 seconds. I don't know if I can do that or not, but I'm going to give it a good shot. 
And the oils play a big role in my life to help me maintain health. And they can and should, hopefully, play a big role in your life as well to help you maintain health and have optimal health. I'll put a little peppermint oil under my nostrils when I run the 100-meter dash uh, on Labor Day, on Memorial Day weekend. Help open up those sinuses and you know, be able to more efficiently get oxygen to your blood. That's what uh, the uh, winners of running competitions do. They get their oxygen in their blood more efficiently than the other guys or gals, depending on the race, of course. Here's our break. We'll be right back. Of January. I have a lot of listeners in Australia. My heart goes out to you folks down there, the loss of lives, the loss of property due to the fires that are taking place down there. It's summertime, of course, in the southern hemisphere, and uh, I don't believe there's any precedence for the uh, damage that these fires are doing, and, and uh, we are praying here in the state that you folks will get relief uh, in the form of rain, and the fires will be contained, and and uh, you, you can get back to living your lives. Unfortunately, it looks like there's been some arson taking place with uh, uh, men setting fires uh, deliberately. That's very tragic, and I, and I hope that the, the law will prosecute these men to the full extent of the law. And um, just hang in there, everybody in Australia. It's a, it's a beautiful country, and, and you, you certainly don't deserve that. We move forward here. It's, it's now 2020. We move forward in time, looking towards an election in 10 months. It will be here pretty quick. First Tuesday in November. This is the first Tuesday of January. First Tuesday of November, there will be a national election. I'm not sure exactly what will happen in the next 10 months. I know it will be historical. There will be things that will make you ha happy, things that will make you angry. Uh, the president will be traveling around the country doing personal appearances. I, I hope to make a Trump rally. I have not yet. Friends of mine who have been to him say that John are just the most fun that you can imagine. Uh, people start getting in line at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning to get, get inside the stadium because typically twice as many people show up as there are seats in any given venue. That's expected. Um, and I want to keep emphasizing, make sure that your conservative friends, neighbors, relatives, co-workers, people you go to church with, make sure your conservative uh, associates and friends and relatives are registered to vote. You might be shocked. You might be surprised to find out that they're not. Make sure that, that they have an offer of transportation to vote this coming November, or, or vote by absentee ballot, assuming they have that in your jurisdiction. If they need transportation, give them transportation. If they need child care, help with child care. Whatever it takes. We need an overwhelming victory for Donald Trump. Not, not something just slipping by, by a slim margin. We need an overwhelming majority for Donald Trump. So there can be no uncertainty whatsoever, no question whatsoever that this president had an overwhelming majority. And it's up to all of you out there listening to me to help make that happen, to do your part, to talk to people, make sure they're registered to vote, make sure they make a commitment to vote, either in person or by absentee ballot. That's not optional. It's really not. 
Tomorrow morning, we should have uh, my friend Professor James McKinney with us first hour, my friend Jeff Nyquist with us the second hour. It will be a fun Wednesday, as Wednesdays always are. Thursday, we'll have Tom Berryhill with us uh, the first uh, hour for half an hour. And then the John Moore radio show financial advisor, Mr. Steve Hunt, uh, with us the second hour. Friday, Tom will be back with us for emergency communications the first hour and my friend Dr. Lynn Wilbert the second hour talking about health-related matters. And he and I were both going to be training for the Senior Olympics. He's about 10 years younger than me, and he's planning on uh, entering uh, about half a dozen uh, competitions in the Senior Olympics. Uh, and um, we'll be talking, we, we, we might start talking about uh, the Senior Olympics and competing in track and field, um, uh, a, a subject near and dear to